So in this screencast, we're going to introduce the integumentary system. We're going to focus on the structure and the function of the skin itself. And later on, we will move to, in another screencast, we'll talk about the skin derivatives or what are called the appendages of the skin or the, or the accessory organs of the skin. But we'll talk about the structure and function of the skin and cutaneous membrane. Probably the number one function of the skin is the role that it plays in protecting deeper tissue layers um, from a lot of different things. It, it doesn't necessarily protect the internal organs like maybe your skeleton, think about your, uh, your, your skull protecting your brain or the thoracic cage protecting internal organs, but it protects them from all of these different, organ, uh, different examples of possible damage. Now you don't need to memorize these necessarily or be able to come up with them from scratch, but just recognize that there's a number of different types of damage that could occur that the skin protects us from. And in addition to protecting underlying tissues, the skin also functions, has these three functions, um, has a lot to do, and we will, we will see this in lab, has a lot to do with help controlling body heat, um, either maintaining a warm body temperature or actually cooling off. It gets rid of, uh, through sweat, gets rid of um, a lot of waste products, which is good enough for us right now. And then an important one is that it synthesizes vitamin D. Um, through a little bit of exposure from sunlight, that, that stimulates that process. Um, nowhere near, as some people would, the amount that some people would like to claim you need, um, just a matter of minutes um, in a day would would uh, help you synthesize the vitamin D that you need. The skin structure is composed of two main layers. The outer layer, which is the epidermis, and then the deep layer of the skin, which is called the dermis. Um, and of course, you can see your various word parts that are there. Um, but the epidermis is composed of stratified squamous epithelium, a tissue that you should be familiar with from the tissues unit. The special part about the skin the human epidermis, is that it is what's called keratinized. Um, it's hardened by a special protein called keratin. Uh, keratin is actually what kills the outer layer cells, but those cells are filled um, through a process called kerat keratinization, but they're filled with this protein. It's a hardening protein. It protects. It gives a, a protective function to the skin. Um, but we'll come back to keratinization um, and, and how it functions a little bit later. But you'll see the noted difference between the stratified squamous that you saw in the tissues unit and then the epidermis itself. And then the, the dense connective tissue dermis, where a lot of the skin accessory organs reside. So not to spend a whole lot of time here, this is a picture straight out of the textbook of the different, well, just a section of skin. And you can note all of the things that you are going to want to be familiar with by studying uh, the structure of the skin. Back to the structure of the epidermis and the layers of the epidermis itself. Uh, there's only two layers. There's more than that. There's, there's up to five layers depending on the location on the body, on the surface of the skin. But there's two layers that you need to know uh, because of the function and the importance to the, the skin functioning itself. This first one is called the stratum basale, pronounced a little weird, but it, it is stratum basale, and actually uh, sometimes you might hear this word with a long A sound called stratum, stratum basale, um, otherwise known as stratum germinativum, but this layer, the most important function or defining part of this layer is that this is where your skin grows. This is a deeper layer of the skin, but that's where the skin, by mitosis, the skin cells replace themselves. So your skin actually grows really from the inside out. And as the cells mature in the life of uh, the, the skin tissue itself, they push the older tissues, they push the older cells right off, and um, which actually ends up being about you know 85% of the dust that you might find in houses, the old dead skin cells that have sloughed off. But the, but the stratum basale is where mitosis takes place and the skin actually grows. The other epidermal layer that you need to be familiar with is called the stratum or stratum corneum. 
and this is the outermost layer. These are the cells that are filled with the keratin, and these are the ones that are on the outermost layer of the skin. These are the ones that you can actually see. So you need to know the stratum basale and stratum corneum. Again, here you can, you can see that we, there are some other layers um, that are a little beyond the scope of what we're going to do in this class, so you need to know these too. On to the most predominant pigment that's found in the skin, uh, melanin. Melanin is a pigment, it's produced by melanocytes, should make sense if you look at your word parts there, and their color is mostly, mostly determined by genetics, although these melanocytes can also be stimulated by exposure to sunlight, um, giving some individuals tans, but mostly it's genetics and the, the color isn't exact, anywhere from a yellowish to a brownish, but um, typically more in that area. And uh, you'll see these pictures, you'll see these in slides in lab. Uh, melanocytes, mostly all human beings, they have the same number of melanocytes, but those individuals with darker skin tone, depending on, again, genetics or ethnicity, um, African Americans, for instance, they just produce more melanin in their cells, in the melanocytes. They don't have more melanocytes um, than, say, than, say, I would, than someone that very fair skin. So again, another picture that's just a part of this screencast, but you can check this out in the book, and you can understand the characteristics of the two, the two epidermal layers that you need to be responsible for. Onto the dermis. Again, the dermis is made mostly composed of dense connective tissue as opposed to the epithelium that the, that the outermost epidermis would be made of. Um, two layers, the papillary layer and the reticular layer. And you can, again, take a look at this in the pictures that you've got available to you, and you can determine uh, or distinguish between these. Between these. Um, in the papillary layer, you have projections called dermal papillae, and these, these are actually what produce, um, it's a different pattern in everybody, but the papillary layer, they produce fingerprints. If you like, look at the tips of your fingers, you can see how these projections um, push up through even the epidermis. And then the reticular layer is where most of the rest of these accessory layers are, or structures are going to be found. Two things to note with the structure of the dermis are the types of fibers that are involved and collagen fibers and elastic fibers, probably the two most uh, common and, and most important fibers that would be found in, in the human body. Um, but collagen, they, they're very tough, they're very strong, they... Um, resist a lot of uh, stretching or movement, so they give skin the toughness, but at the same time, a lot of elastic fibers give skin its elasticity. Um, both of those have a lot to do with the ability of the shape, and especially or to keep a shape, to keep a tone of the skin, and as we age, um, the elastic fibers especially are what are, are really damaged by UV light exposure, and after a while, they become less elastic. Therefore, you see the wrinkles in the skin as, as human beings age. So the last, really, the layer of the skin that we're going to talk about isn't necessarily um, thought of or considered a true layer of the skin, and that's the hypodermis. Um, again, word parts kind of tell you where it's going to lie, but the hypodermis is adipose tissue. It's fat. It's the subcutaneous fat, so meaning under the skin. It's thicker slash thinner, different parts of your body, depending who you are, genetically, um, males, females, etc. Um, this, this is the subcutaneous fat tissue that makes curves of the body and, and uh, has a, plays a role of anchoring um, skin as well as, as, well as uh, insulation and possible uh, energy reserves. But that's what fat tissue does. Again, a picture for you to review. Um, it's pretty clear here that you can see even the layers of the epidermis, the basali layer down here, and you can even see melanocytes, um, and then the cornified layer, or the stratum corneum, is right there. This, um, the deeper layer down here being the dermis. 
I don't want to say much about this because this is part of the lab activity that you're going to investigate yourself, but these are both pictures. These are both pictures of stratified epithelium. Uh, one of them is of the skin and the outer uh, cutaneous layer, and another one would be um, found somewhere else in the body. But you can note there's certainly a distinction there.